to the spring of the year of the duplicitous cat. In Panzera, Prince Stepka, outnumbered, makes a final stand with the armies of Tiplef Nazin. Baron Fapelt strikes the final blow. Tiplef Nazin's army is destroyed, its territory occupied, only a few forts still hold out. Prince Stepka surrenders and is taken into custody. In the south, Stilwanese militia move into Jelgava, supplying the revolutionary army as a challenge, but Marshal Brunost pushes forward. In the east, Maustri advances into Krogan in some strength. The Crimsonian guards put up a brave defence but are overwhelmed. In Revdenii, Manath and Crimsonian forces give up their siege and advance further into Maustria. They are stopped and engaged near the city of Tarmilt, with Lord Flavisham leading his army behind them. Outnumbered, the coalition army is defeated and must retreat, but the only road open leads to Quiota, and in that region, a fierce battle is brewing between two vast armies, near a village named Kvetska. The Grand Army of the Coalition, led by Citizen General Acorn and assisted by Altamani of Lamarca, consists of 31 brigades of Crimsonian and Zironese troops, over 60,000 mice under arms. They have marched up and down across eastern Maustria for the best part of a year, capturing Adon and venturing into Pratklatkov. They have engaged Maustrian divisions and won a series of very one-sided battles. But the main Maustrian army has evaded them, blocking and marching around them. Now, Citizen General Acorn has marched into Quiota, searching for an enemy worthy of his vast force, and hoping to win a decisive victory before the will to fight in Crimsonia crumbles and First Citizen Laurel loses her majority in the Senate. Gudarian is also seeking a battle. General the Count Gudarian has had less than a brilliant war. In the last war, the Count's presence and command was decisive, destroying the Zuronese army at the Battle of the River Crossings in Adon and rescuing the Allied army from almost certain defeat. Everything he did prospered, and it was Gudarian's strategy that trapped Acorn in the Fetka Gap, ending the First War of Succession. There was even talk of the Count being elected by the Council of Nobles to the throne. This war, Gudarian has had... challenges. He led the invasion of Stilwin from the west, but was repulsed, despite outnumbering the enemy two to one. It was Admiral Rattus who won the glory from that campaign, capturing Narbak and Jelgava, while Gudarian regrouped and rapidly retrained his inexperienced conscripts. Since then, Gudarian has spent his time in the interior, directing columns of soldiers to the front, while his contemporaries have won battles and conquered lands. Baron Fapelt, the Lord Constable of Maustria, has successfully invaded and defeated Tiplef Nazim, while Lord Flavisham has led a smaller army into Crimsonia itself, capturing province after province and now threatening the capital. Gudarian's most recent battle against the coalition force besieging Revdenii ended in failure, with the Count again forced to retreat against an inferior force. It is impossible to say that all this has had an impact on the Count, but he has decided that now is the time to engage and destroy the coalition army, and perhaps to redeem his reputation. Gudarian is able to assemble 30 brigades, almost the same size as the coalition army, but it is split into three parts, entering the region from different directions. Gudarian orders two divisions to hold Quiota City. The rest will combine and engage the enemy near the village of Kvetska. But Gudarian has another problem. The army includes three brigades of rapidly assembled troops little better than militia. The Count has a low opinion of these troops, and does not trust them to take a significant part in the battle. They are assigned to guard the Bolgenberg, an important hill that will guard the army's line of communication. With the units in Quiota and the militia sidelined, Gudarian's army now consists of only 18 brigades that will actively take part in the battle. The Maustrians advance and engage an exposed division of the coalition force, hoping to inflict serious damage before the rest of the Grand Army can combine and drive them back. At dawn on the sixth day of Chirping Squirrel, two Maustrian divisions attack a Crimsonian division near the village of Kvetska. The Maustrian cavalry observes and hinders the movement of the bulk of the Crimsonian and Zuronese divisions on the Revator, a ridge that dominates the right of the battlefield. Citizen General Acorn and Altamani of Lamarca get their forces on the march to the relief of Kvetska. The Zuronese leave a division of troops watching the Maustrians in Quiota, with orders to screen and delay any movement. The battle begins with a fierce firefight as light troops hold difficult ground east of the village. The lights succeed in pinning the guards sent to attack them, but are eventually overwhelmed by superior numbers. The rest of Roulet's exposed division is attacked by superior forces and is shattered and driven from the field before the first elements of Aragon's guard division can arrive. General Acorn is on the scene, 
and begins ordering artillery and guard brigades into position, hoping to hold the village long enough for the rest of the army to arrive. In Quiota, the Maustrian divisions can hear the blast of cannon and realize the battle is underway. The commanders consult and decide to march out against the Zironese blocking them from joining the battle. The Zironese hold their position as long as possible and then begin falling back. They have no intention of fighting a very one-sided battle. Their task is to screen and delay, not die pointlessly. Over the course of the day, the Zironese will fall back, firing their guns and disrupting the Maustrian advance. The Maustrians have no cavalry to harry the retreat, and their guns cannot fire to pin the enemy as their own units block the fire. The battle around Quiota is a no-score draw, but the Zironese have done their job. In the centre, the cavalry division are pulling back, slowing the Crimsonians in front of them, but a brigade is caught exposed and attacked by determined infantry. The cavalry are forced back, and the Crimsonians catch a unit of light infantry and drive them back as well. The Crimsonians charge into the disordered lights and overrun them before being countercharged by the Maustrian heavy cavalry. The Crimsonians are dispersed and destroyed, and the eager cavalry pursue forward but are caught out by a very stubborn brigade of infantry who rapidly form square and fight gallantly. The heavy cavalry are destroyed. The central part of the field looks to be a stalemate, with neither side able or willing to send reinforcements to tip the balance. On the left, the Crimsonian cavalry have arrived and work with Thomas' infantry division to engage and hold the Maustrians under Emmelshausen, stopping them reinforcing the effort around Kvetska. Over the course of the next few hours, the Crimsonians will whittle away the left, and late in the day, a determined cavalry charge breaks the Maustrian line. Emmelshausen's division will be so weak as to effectively collapse. But the bulk of the battle occurs around the village of Kvetska, where Lumon's division launches an assault on the Crimsonian guard, but are halted by stubborn resistance. Another attack is launched, with the brigades driven back in disorder. Both sides pour in reinforcements, hoping to drive the other away from the village. The Zironese divisions are now arriving, with the 2nd Crimsonian Guards Division. On a patch of ground behind the contested village, Citizen General Acorn and Altamani of Lamarca hold a hurried conference. The Maustrian attacks have been blunted, and now the coalition can use their superior numbers to drive Gudarian from the field. Gudarian realises he has no more troops to support around Kvetska apart from the militia. Unwilling to trust these units, he instead orders the cavalry in the centre to fall back to hold against the attacks around the village. Lumond launches another attack into Kvetska, and this time the exhausted guards are driven out. But the Maustrians pursue into another brigade, this one accompanied by Acorn himself. The battle is fierce and close run, but eventually the Maustrians break and the guards charge out of the village. The guards are launched against the cavalry, just arriving from the centre, driving them away. Well, Acorn decides that discretion is the better part of valour, and returns to his own lines. Gavetska has been retaken, and the 2nd Guards Division is advancing. North of the village, the Zironese are now in action, with devastating fire from their light infantry disordering the Maustrian infantry. Then the guards and the cavalry swarm the end of the line. South of the village, two guards brigades charge the guns, while another charges the reforming infantry to the east. The Maustrian guns are overrun, but the infantry resist and eventually drive the guards back. The Zironese cavalry breaks the line and keeps on charging. The Maustrians run and are captured by Crimsonian troops in the village. The front around Kvetska is falling apart. Gudarin calls for all the cavalry and the remaining infantry in the centre to fall back and support, and reluctantly calls the militia forward from the Bolgenberg. The Zironese heavy cavalry charge in cooperation with Crimsonian guards and destroy another Maustrian brigade. Gudarin forms his remaining units into a desperate square, and the coalition charge again. The Zuranese are blocked by accurate volleys, and the Crimsonian guards are driven back, while the Maustrian cavalry countercharge and drive back another unit of guards, pursuing them all the way to the lake. The sun is beginning to set, and Gudarian orders the exposed cavalry to fall back, before ordering another unit to charge the disrupted Zuranese heavy cavalry. In an act of suicidal bravery, Gudarian joins the cavalry and leads the charge, which is almost a disaster, but the Zuranese heavy cavalry are eventually driven away. But now Gudarian and his unit are exposed to a fresh unit of Crimsonian heavy cavalry who charge. Gudarian is in real trouble here, but the heavy cav are stopped by some desperate volleys of the infantry in their flanks. The charge halts in confusion, and the battle is over as darkness falls. Gudarian's army has lost 11 brigades, over half of those that were actually engaged. He sends couriers to the Quiota divisions, ordering them to march through the night to join the army as it retreats to Ziegel. Gudarian's reputation has not been saved, and the Count is more determined than ever to achieve glory and end the war. The Coalition have lost seven brigades, all but one belonging to the Crimsonians. Acorn and Altamani have won a significant battle, 
secured Quiota and provided a path for Hanship and the forces from Tarmilt to retreat safely. But Crimsonia is mostly occupied, and the Senate is screaming for Laurel's resignation. Will the bloody victory at Kvetska be enough to keep the war going? Or will the coalition sue for peace? <laughs>